Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to Prospect Sanction 101. My name is Chris Robbins, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys a video breakdown of Frank Ragnow. This dude got taken 20th overall by the Detroit Lions, who happen to be my favorite team. And I've been watching through some of the guys' tape, like on my own time and things like that, separately, and. I am just so hyped to bring this to you guys. I have been looking forward to being able to do a full-on breakdown of whoever the Lions took at 20. I've been going through guys, and some of the guys I've broken down have had that in mind in, in different ways. And he happens to be one of the guys we haven't gotten to yet. So this will be you guys' first view of my thoughts on him and uh, what the Lions in particular We'll be able to get with this guy coming to the Motor City. So, uh, a couple of things I'm actually going to start out with first before we actually get into the tape are what this guy does off the field. This guy is an active community member. He's won, I believe, five or six awards, various awards uh, for different off the field uh, accomplishments. I believe he's like a Werfeld Trophy winner and all that kind of stuff. Semi-finalist and uh, academic All-American and uh, all those types of great things too. So he definitely fits that Quinn character mold uh, that we look for in not only a person, a member of the community, uh, and, and things like that. So we're definitely getting a good, a good person, a good man. Uh, a, a good guy to have in the locker room, a, a veteran, well, not really a veteran, but a four-year senior uh, who was a leader at the Arkansas uh, Razorbacks program uh, there. And honestly, this dude is, is so impressive. I was watching his press conference earlier today. Uh, it's 5 o'clock now. It's having like 4.30. Uh, and he's a, he's a great dude, and he was joking about how he remembers matching up with Ashawn. Uh, and, and he said something like, I, the one thing I remember was that he looked like he was 40 or something like that. Uh, so, I mean, this dude is funny, and he fixed, too. He fixed from a, a city standpoint. Uh, one thing that goes kind of over the radar, or under the radar, rather, with, uh, prospects is how they fit with a, a particular city, a location, and, and things like that, right? Uh, we heard, uh, Rosen mentioning it, I believe, talking about New York and how he wants to go to New York and all that kind of stuff. And Ragnow is, is perfect for, for Michigan. Uh, he's he's a very typical Midwestern kid. He's from Minnesota. Uh, and he talked about how he loves to hunt, he loves to fish, things like that. He's a very outdoorsy type guy. Uh, and, and so Michigan really fits with him. I believe he said something about having a, a cottage in Windsor. Or something like that across the bridge so uh, he's definitely a, a very comfortable area for him to be in off the field as well which is going to be important earlier on in his career as he makes the adjustment to the pro game uh, not having to worry so much about everything else going on around him either uh, so uh, additionally he is a center from Arkansas and apparently he had a close relationship with Travis Swanson uh, who was our former center uh, last year. Uh, and so they have an, an ongoing communication and, and talk about him, and he said that Swanson serves as a mentor to him. So that kind of relationship uh, with a former Lion, I'm sure, will also help him uh, in some ways immediately uh, when he comes over to the Detroit Lions organization. So, with that being said, uh, he was in the Senior Bowl. I don't believe there's actually Senior Bowl film of individual people on YouTube, and particularly practices, so I won't show you guys that. Uh, but if you do have like a full Senior Bowl game or whatever and want to go back and watch that, or maybe you have the Senior Bowl practices tape, uh, definitely feel free to go back and, and see what you can do there. Uh, again, it's a little bit more of a diverse group. Uh, so, but, uh, first off, here's all the tapes that we have available. I'm going to try and stick to 17 tapes for you guys. Uh, just so we can get his most recent product here uh, and, and show you guys what he's done this year uh, and at his most recent point of development. So, uh, getting into the physicality things here, uh, he is listed at 6 foot 5 and 1 8, 3 12, uh, 33 and 1 8 long arms, and 9 and 3 8 inch hands. Uh, so, 
Uh, definitely a very good size for a singer, as you can see. Uh, I believe he's one of the heavier singers in the class, but yet he's still extremely athletic. Uh, in fact, Kent LaPlatt does his RAS thing. Uh, let's see if I can pull it up for you guys here. Uh, oh, I probably should have clicked on the right now specific one. Uh, yeah, while I'm on here, if you guys want to definitely check out Kent LaPlatt's stuff, he does this thing called RAS Relative Athletic Score, uh, where he compares uh, certain players in the draft today to other players in the past. Uh, and you can see what this guy's been doing uh, athletically relative to some of the other singers. I think he has it going back to 1987 or something like that. So uh, this is definitely a good tool for you guys to access. Uh, in fact, you can see the card right here uh, for Van Der Esch. And, and uh, I'm just going through to see if I can find the uh, Ragnar one for you guys. I know he has it on here. Michelle Hughes. He should be getting close. I need Ridley Hurst. More. There he is. Spring grad now. Uh, so his height was at the 88 percentile range. His weight is at 63.5. Uh, his 40 time was sub 5, which is really impressive for an interior alignment. Uh, 97th percentile. 20 yard time or 20 yard split was a 291. His 10 yard split was 174, also 94 93 percentile range. Bench press went up a, a, uh, a rep to 658, so 65.8 percentile. Uh, and then his vertical jump, very explosive, uh, 33.5 there, uh, which is a 98 percentile. His broad jump, again, very explosive, 98.5 uh, percentile, uh, and his shuttle time was a 4.51, which is a 93 percentile. So he grades out elite in all of these areas, uh, and is 16th out of all offensive guards and 4th out of all centers. Uh, so definitely someone that's very athletic. Uh, he does have a little bit of a low 3 comb. Uh, maybe an impact in why he's not as effective in the screen game uh, as he possibly could be. But, I mean, as you guys can see from his, his shuttles and, and his uh, splits, so he's definitely very explosive. So, uh, with that being said, we've had his athletic scores covered. We have his physicality scores and stuff like that covered. So, let's finally get into this and break down some tape. So, uh, I'm actually going to just go through these one by one in the order that they're presented for you guys. Uh, so, with that, we're going to start with TCU here. Uh, let me just focus, pause this real quick. Turn this to half speed. Uh, and again, definitely feel free to go through these uh, yourself and, and watch some of these on your own time if you feel like it. Uh, definitely a good idea. I'm just going to go through it and tell you what I see uh, the Lions being able to do with them here. So he has number two, uh, and I believe he lines up at center. You saw him there on the pole. So he's athletic enough to pull. I mean, we see that from the start here. Yep, that's him right there. Gets out in front and engages number 19. And for the most part, takes him out of the play. So, very nice gain there for the running back. Very, very strong anchor. Nice job of hand placement and technique, getting his hands inside. The dude was not getting moved back an inch. He was holding his line very, very strong. And again, I'll, I'll show you guys this uh, again. I mean, look at that, man. Just, he's so, so strong. And he just stays there. He's not getting moved. He's not getting beat. Just a freaking wall.
same thing here. Nice first punch by the defensive tackle. And in fact, that was actually a really nice, strong first punch. Uh, but what you're going to see here is after that initial jolt, right now just bull rush attempt it looks like. And then he just anchors and he's trying to beat him, trying to get around him. But just not a chance with right now there, man. He is not letting himself get beat an inch. Zone block there. That's the defensive tackle. And look at that. Look at that hole. Look at that hole. Watch how he just opens this up for the running back. Watch this. He's with the right guard here on the double team. And then, bam! Look at him rotate. Explode through the block and, and drive. That is elite. Hole great. Or hole opening skills right there. Elite. Same thing here. Short yardage, bam, just opens up the hole. Wide open lane for the running back. Easy first down. Watch it again here from the backfield. And bam, hitting that, that right guard, 66, and then he just stays on his guy, takes him out of the play. Easy lane and third and short for the running back. That's what the Lions were missing last year. Couldn't convert third downs at all. Couldn't convert short yards. Couldn't keep drives alive. Stafford was getting hammered. In fact, I think he got hurt like in literally every body spot last year. This dude fixes it all. One pick. Can you see the athletic ability here? Great job with selling that play action rollout. Easy pass for the quarterback. Easy touchdown. What a play. Again, another thing too. He plays center. So he's very, very good at communication skills. Uh, again, he's a fourth-year senior, so he's a very effective leader on this line for this team. Uh, you see him here ID IDing the mic uh, and participating in the defense process as well. Very, very nice asset to have, especially if he's not even going to be playing center. Very clean snapper. I don't believe he had any fumbles last year. And just look at this, man. He did not give anything up. Now, obviously, that was an outside run. Uh, but, I mean, just look at what Ragnar was able to do on this play, right? So he's going to be the center here. And then he just very does a very good job of holding his guy, making sure he can't come over and make a play on the outside. Just super effective at holding his blocks. Third down and long passing situation. Again, a zone play here. But what I love about this play is his awareness, right? So what he's going to do here is you're watching the center, of course. So this is a zone play, right? We see this. He's the guy that's clean, right? These, him on him, him on him, him on him, him on him. On him. So Ragnow is the guy that's free here in a four-man rush. But what Frank Ragnow does is he decides to be a part of a double team here and help this right guard out, which takes that defensive tackle who was starting to beat him, by the way, if you didn't see that. Watch this defensive tackle here. He's starting to beat this right guard. So what Ragnow does is he comes over and helps, seeing this, and then he gives his quarterback enough time to throw that ball. Obviously, it wasn't the best pass, but with Stafford there, you might be getting a better pass. Second level block here, bam, anchors, completely takes this guy out of the play. And look at this finish, look at that finish. Oh my goodness, this is why you don't trust national media people all the time. Go back and watch some of this, these tapes yourself, or with us, or with Vosh, or Dan, or whoever, and, and 
look at what this guy is able to do. He gets to the second level, completely takes out the TC linebacker, and bam, look at how he finishes. Look at that drive! Bam! Just follows through his blocks so effectively. Again, very, very clean pocket. Look at that hand placement. Watch his hands on this play. See what, where those hands are? The, right on the inside. He's so strong. Preventing the defensive lineman from getting any separation whatsoever. And he's just a so, so good at staying engaged. And not letting himself get beat. Oh man, I need to turn quality up on this. 360. 480? Ah, oh, that's annoying. Oh, that's the problem with the actual tape. Okay. Here we go. That's a little bit better. Again, the center here. Again, calling out. Oh my gosh, what a terrible play by the tight end. Okay, here we go. Power set. Just stays, anchors. And he gets out so nicely on the screen. Watch, see, and this is the thing too, right? He stays engaged, stays engaged, stays engaged. I mean, bam, after this running back is out on this, or this receiver is out on the screen, the next one he releases, the number 90 was nowhere close to this play. I mean, it's this guy on the outside that was originally on, on him that has the chance to, to make a play here. Allen is releasing this, I believe that's Kyle Allen, is releasing this ball, and look at where the guy that Rando was on is on, right? He's not even, he's five yards away from the quarterback as he's releasing this on the screen. Elite, man. And then watch him get 10 yards upfield and BAM! Completely take out his guy. Took him out of the play. And next yards. That is free yards. Again, so strong, so engaged. And then he just gets upfield and completely takes his guy way out of the play and finishes. That's incredible blocking from Frank the Tank right now. That was right, it's Kyle Allen. Zero sacks allowed and 28 starts that continued throughout the rest of the season. So zero sacks allowed in four years at Arkansas. Three of which I believe he was a starter as well. Second level block here and BAM! Pancakes! Pancakes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Watch this. Gets to the second level. Bam! Linebacker turns his back. Oh no, you didn't, son. You going down to the ground and he stays on top of him. Love it. Again, look at that hole. Unfortunately, the back side of the play was completely taken out, but look at this left side of what the line was able to do on this play. Again, you're just really watching, watching the center who's right now here, and look at that drive. Puts him down on the ground and stays on top of him. That is a fantastic play from right now. Here, zone blocking, helps with the double team, stays engaged, long enough to take him out of the play. Very nice. Getting 72 here, it looks like another zone play. And look at that anchor and base. He is not getting moved. And look at this, quarterback running around, scrambling, pressure from all over. Look at how long Frank is able to give him. That's time to throw the football, man. 
Can you imagine if Matthew Stafford actually had time to throw a pass? 327, right? Look at this. Still engaged. Still engaged. Still engaged. Still engaged. Finally, 333. 27 to 28, 28 to 29, 30, 31, 31, 32, 32, 33. That is five full seconds to throw the football. And it's even faster, it's even longer in slow motion. But that is five real time seconds to throw the football. Unreal. If Stafford didn't have to get freaking hit every time he threw a ball, he might be able to stay healthy for a year. Again, singer. Oh, damn. All right, well, you can still kind of see him here. And look at this. Look at that driving finish. Look at him completely take him out of this play. A little bit hard to see. Because the tape quality. But I think you guys can get the point if you're watching from start to finish. Because he stands out. And watch right here. He's still this guy here. Uh, right here. And then, bam, just finishes. Five yards after the line of scrimmage. This dude is shoving people back five yards. Last year we got, I think it was like 0.25 or 0.5 yards of blocking up the field in the run game. Five yards! That's ten times as much blocking as we got last year. Ten times! Incredible. Second level. Very nice athletic ability to get there quick. Tries the bull rush. Not a chance. Such a strong anchor. Bam! Look at that! And because of that, he's able to avoid the sack. Because there's not interior pressure coming from the center. He's able to at least get back to the line. In fact, they actually gave him a yard. Unreal. Again, just watch what Frank is able to do here. Such strong anchoring base. And, and Allen avoids the sack and gets the yard. Unbelievable, man. And what's, the, what's the, the best part about this is we're four, four minutes and 12 seconds into this, right? How many bad plays has he had, right? I mean, there's been ones where he's done his job instead of done more than, right? But uh, even those are good plays. You just, on the old line, your job is to me is to not get beat, right? If you're getting beat, that's a bad play. And he has yet to get beat four, four minutes and 12 seconds into this consistency throughout a whole game. Almost half time he hasn't gotten beat yet. Once. Bam. Look at that. Easy three yards. That's staying on schedule. Look at that! Oh my god! What a freaking block by Rad now. Watch this. Watch this man finish. Look at this. Bam. And then right on top of him. Take him down to the ground. And stay on top of him. Love this man. Love this. Zone blocking. Helps out his right guard a little bit there. And gives his quarterback just enough time to get there on third and four. Complete the first down. Here he is from the back view, again. Oh, no. Oh. Different play. Oh, I was watching the wrong guy. One second. Maybe it's him. No, I couldn't find him. Oh, there he is. Okay. Okay, again, singer here. Third quarter. Eh, took him out of the play enough. I wouldn't necessarily call that a loss. It's not a win. But... And even then, and <laughs> getting this long, like I said. 
pull block here. Uh, you kind of missed that original guy, so you might want to work on that a little bit. Uh, with the pull blocking. I would like him to, I would, uh, 52 kind of missed that block though, too, to be fair. Kind of hard to tell who's the son that, that guy was. If it was 52, then right now did his thing. If it was right now, then he kind of missed the guy. Uh, looks like that might have been 52, just not getting there quick enough. Because he was way upfield, so. I don't know if I blame right now for that. Again, zone blocking helps with the double team. Not getting anywhere. Also snaps both under center and in gun, which is nice. I really like this. That's the underrated part of centers too. Sometimes when centers get to the league, they're not experienced snapping under under center. There are a lot of gun snappers. Uh, with Red now, you see him snap under center as well because Arkansas runs Arkansas runs a pro style offense. Yes, immediately as well if you do decide to use him at center. Uh, a little bit slow to get out there, which is a bit surprising given his athletic traits. Was this a blocking release, maybe? Uh, yeah, he first takes the nose, which is what happens here, but then he sees that his guy's engaged, so he gets out a little bit late. Not a big deal, since there were two guys there, and he was only blocking with one guy. But I, what I will talk about, what I will say about this play, is look at this guy's motor, right? Look at how he plays through the whistle plays through the tackle, and he finishes. He lands on top of that guy. Motor, finish, tough, physical. Love it. Zong again. And again, I love this play rack. Oh, and look at that. The guy's down on the ground. Oh, yes. Look at that. He first helps with this guy. Sees this guy right there, so they take him to the ground. Stay on top of him. Clean lane for the quarterback to get the ball down the field, and the receiver fell. Oh my goodness, man. Another what appears to be, yep, zone scheme again. No one's even coming close to punishing that interior. Except for the guy on the left side, who even he got flattened by the left guard. Easy escape lane for the quarterback on third and 14. Third and 14, and Kyle Law picked up a first down. Or Allen, I mean. Look at that double. Drive. Next and easy, three yards of blocking. And the running back's off and running. Watch this. He ends up opening the... What, now, again... While this wasn't Ragnall's hole that opened, what it allows him to do is that left guard was able to open that hole because Ragnall moved to the right. That's a good blocking scheme, first off. But even even more so, that's great awareness, good protection, and great job opening this by Ragnall. Here's a better view. Ragnall and the right guard team up, and because of that, this left guard or left tackle was able to, to come across and open up that hole for the running back. That is good team offensive line blocking. But right now plays a key part in that because he's able to to open that lane up to open up to free up the other offensive line. So not only will right now help himself in the in that center position or the left guard spot, but what he's going to do is he's going to help the guys next to him in that whole line as a unit, which is why I think you we have to get when you get a first down offensive into your offensive lineman. Uh, is you want a guy who's not only going to be able to do his job, but help the team and the whole unit as a whole contribute to, to success on both passing and drum blocking? And exactly what Red now does. Look at this. Just so strong with his anchor. Unfortunately, the hole doesn't open. Uh, I don't know what the running back was doing on this play. Let me see that again. The running back probably should have taken this to the left. He had a one-on-one -on -one matchup, but yeah, right now did his job anchored. 
Again, Anchor, look at how he holds this line. Look at how this line, this blue line is not moving. Clean pocket for the quarterback. Not the best throw. But it had nothing to do with being under pressure. Look at this. Look at that. And then look at that rotation. Oh, yes. And that frees up the ring. Back. Watch what he does here, right? This is not only, again, this is pretty good schematically as well. But, I mean, the awareness and the, the IQ of Ren now to be able to do this effectively is so, so high. Right? So what he does here is he starts out by taking this straight on. Right? Which leaves this hole initially thought of as, as closed. Right? But watch what happens here is Red now immediately shifts his leverage or his, his body angle to create this lane. So what he does is he shifts to the left. He moves his momentum from, from forward to his left side, which what this allows him to do is when he anchors, that frees up that gap for the running back to open, to take that open gap. That is fantastic blocking. Oh my god. What a hole. What a cool. Oh man, this is so, so, so well done. The one guy got through, and even he got laid out on top of like 50, whatever. That's incredible. And oh my god. Do you see this? Do you people see this hole? Look at this hole! To be fair, that, that he has help from that left guard, but are you kidding me? Third and one, the guy gets like, what, 10 yards on a third and one? What? <laughs> I mean, are you, are you freaking kidding me? And again, look at this, goal line set, right? That line is not moving. Do you guys remember how often on goal line sex, they will run, run to win Washington or Amir Abdullah or whatever, right up the middle, and, and our guards, Dahl and, and um, Karen and Barkley, and all those guys would get driven back so far. And even in some cases, Glasgow. Did you guys. See? Oh my goodness, man. And, and again, this is done well done by the whole offensive line of Arkansas, but I mean, look at what Ragnow is doing on these plays. He's in the middle of it all. Same thing. If not for that corner coming on the blitz, that's a, that's a possible touchdown. That's a great defensive call. And again, look at him just drive this guy away from the quarterback. Easy. Again, completely takes this guy out of the play. Doesn't even have a chance to make a play on the run. Very nice play action boot. And only the one guy even has a chance to make a play. And he was free from the get. Oh, what a hit. And then he anchors. Beautiful. Easy completion on third and short. Easy first down. Keeps the drive alive. Such a strong anchor, not even getting moved. To be fair, that's a double, but even then, <laughs> he's not getting moved at all. Pull blocker here, lead blocker, actually, on this play. And, oh, nope, he wasn't. My bad. There's the guy behind him. Alright, so we'll watch that again. Uh, he is this guy here. First down. Wow. 
what an anchor. He's again double team, but he's not getting moved. Um, again, I love this so much. This what see, look at what Ragnar is doing here, right? So what you're getting here is he takes that guy out, right? But he sees this guy coming across. So what he does is he makes sure that that guy doesn't come free, right? So yes, he does his job here, but he sees the stunt. That is great play recognition and IQ on right now's part. As he sees this defensive tackle stunting across. And then when his guy takes him, he goes right back and blocks the guy closest to him. Unfortunately, the right tackle doesn't handle him. So it's still a sack anyway. But that is not at all on right now. He did what he was supposed to do and more on that play. Again, pressure from the left tackle spot, but... The left guard center guy is not getting even close. Same thing, just look at how engaged he is. Not even coming close. Bam. Third and five. Just holding that line. He's still engaged. Even at the end of the play. Unbelievable. And again, make sure no one can come across the play and hit him from behind. Freeze up a quarterback very nice there on the run. Again, backs up. Ah, oh, I wish he would have seen that guy who was back left. Let's keep, I think he's keeping an eye on the spy guy, though, too. So I can't really blame him. Oof. Oh, that's a great play call by TCU. They sent three guys on the edge. And you know what's interesting about that play is I honestly think they're trying to on purpose to avoid Ragnar. Because watch where this pressure comes in from. Right? These two guys split. And then you have these two guys on the edge and these two guys on the edge. They're sending all their pressure on the edges. Same thing here. All the pressure is coming off the edge. And even that right now it helps take care of some guys. Again, just keeping the interior clean. The one guy starts to get free, so it helps with the double. Quarterback goes down, but not at all right now again. So, I mean, that's just incredible, man. Absolutely incredible. So, next, uh, we'll take a look at Auburn. Turn this to half. At least three quarters. So we can kind of slow it down a little bit. Again, this anchors so nicely. Second level. Yeah, three quarters seems fast.
No one getting past him. Second level. Completely takes out his guy. And, yeah, at the last second he kind of lost him, but at that point he was already swallowed by like seven guys. Again, Anchor. He's getting moved a little bit, but again, this is Auburn, so for him to get moved back a little bit is still pretty good. He's definitely not giving up pressure or hurry or, or sack even. Bam! And look at that play. He just drove him right out. That is some serious, serious leg drive. Watch this. He, look at, he just drives him. That's five yards of blocking. Almost. Center again. And he completely takes that guy out of the play coming back style. That's elite. Second level. Takes on the easy, easy guy there. To completely takes him out of the play and make sure he can't come across first down. Second level again, takes out this linebacker, or, oh, okay, got beat on that one, but again, we're one, <laughs> we're what, 13 minutes into this guy's tape, and this is the first time we've actually seen him with a lost rep, and even Nanya was not a bad loss, by any, it wasn't like he got beat, he just didn't win. He does a great job of recognizing that this is his, his second level block, right? However, what I want to see him do here is instead of wait for him to come across, I want him to be a little bit more aggressive here and take that guy on instead of waiting for him to come to him. I guess he's trying to anchor and, and, and stonewall this here, and it, it doesn't help that this running back is starting out by taking this outside lane, and then he cuts it back in, which kind of forces Red now in a, in a bad spot. Because this, this, at that point, that linebacker is able to just cut inside and, and get around him. Uh, but, yeah, I, again, I would like to see him be a little bit more aggressive uh, on that. But even then, that still wasn't the worst play ever. Again, got pushed back about a yard or so, so he angled him around. And kept him from making a play. Very nice. Zone scheme. This clearly helps on the double. I think that's the first time he's actually been pushed back quite a bit. That's the first time he's actually lost the anchor. When you see it here. Oh yeah, he got thrown back. I don't know what happened there. That must have been like a, a face mask or something. Or he was caught off guard or something, because he's never thrown back. Again. Drives. Even in pass protection. Well, it was originally a pass play, or a draw. He's just driving people back. See right now, right here, 72. He's just driving this guy backwards. Huh. And this is the kind of stuff that the Lions were missing last year on the offensive side. That whole line just got blown up. Oof, Carlton gave us DPI.
Uh, oh, screen pass. Okay, so he didn't really sell that screen as well as I'd like. Uh, but again, he, he definitely does well when he gets there. And look how many yards after block that is, right? That's just a sad thing I made up off the top of my head. But, I mean, look at this, right? So the block happens here, about the 37-ish. And the running back is able to get to about the 47. So you're talking about 20 yards after block by right now. You just got your offense 20 yards with that pick. I'll start. To be fair, that is a nice play by the ring back to cut that back out too. Or back in. Stonewall. How's this guy? Clean. Again, making sure he has both. This guy was struggling a little bit more, so he helps. Great zone block. Second level. Takes the guy on the back side out of the play. Oh, man. They should have gotten that. Look at who's at the bottom. He got a yard. <laughs> he gave it to him, it looks like. Anger. Hand placement. Technique. Dude is just not getting beat. I think that's the first time I've seen him on the ground. I think he released this for the screen. Beautiful. Again, watch what Red now does on this play here. Number 72, the same. He originally starts out by staying engaged. And look at those hands. Gets his hands inside. And then he gets out on the screen like he was supposed to. Great play by Jeff Holland, though, who could go today. I saw that guy was getting a little bit more pressure, so I went over to help. Again, look at how he just, that left guard was getting moved. So he came over and, and helped relieve the quarterback there. Okay, this should be fun. Goal line set. Okay, nice first punch, but then he anchors uh, and doesn't get moved back any further. So, one thing that I will be really, really picky about here with Frank is that he does give up a little bit of a, a first push, a little bit of an initial punch. Uh, especially right here, he gets driven back about a yard or two in the end zone. But once he gets moved, you're not moving him back any further, right? So if you don't complete that drive on him, which as we have yet to see anyone do completely, uh, you're not getting anything else. So throw up that initial first move uh, to a guy. He's he's not getting he's he's winning the second and third phases. Again drives that gets to the second level. And as a result, and then look at that drive. Beautiful. Opens up a lane for the running back and they get out of the shadows. 
Again, gun snap, we talked earlier about his versatility, you snap both gun and under center, just a reminder of that. That was, uh, interesting. Not on right now's part, just the way that that play developed. Again, that shot getting the second level, opens up the hole, and then he drives. And then look at this end of the play, right? Look at how he's still engaged. That guy gave no chance to be a part of the tackle. Plays through the whistle so effectively. And he just finishes. <laughs> Incredible. Oh, that's an easy false start call. Okay, nice. I love his recovery here, right? So again, we just talked about how he originally got beat off the snap. Here he actually gets beat off the snap with a nice move. The defensive, or the nose, uh, attempts to swim move on him right from the start. So while the move is, is actually quite effective and it works really well, right, right now he recovers incredibly nicely and with help completely recovers and takes this guy out of the play. And then when he resets and gets his hands back on him, and in proper positioning, uh, he wins. So again, that initial pressure, but then that recovery, and able to move him out of the way. Very nice. Bam. Just completely drives that hole. Completely open that hole. And look at that running back explode through it. Beautiful. That's a big play. Watch this, right? So... You see him here, he opens this guy up to the left, and then right, oh, yeah, right there, he holds on just enough to where that guy can't come back across the middle, and that ring back gets how many yards out of that? Block happens at the LOS at the 25. There's 25, 30, 35. Frank right now just got your offense 40 yards. Uh, I don't know what happened there. Let's take a look at this again. He's right here. He gets around him. He could put a sack. I called him for holding. Okay, yeah, let's see it from this view. Let's see if anything changes. The guy he's circled, of course. Sending out he anchors well from the start, right? Oh, what was 51 doing? That was a man play. Huh. Okay, I mean, that looks like a sack to me, but... Alrighty then. I guess they technically didn't call it a sack because they got him for holding. Again, took 79 out of the play just long enough there. Picked up about 5 yards after block. Nice drive, and everyone's able to move out of the way to the right to free up the running back for the first. Can I completely just take that oh, Is that a false start or something? own play here and just completely takes this guy out of the play. Does his job.
Again, just completely takes some young out of that gap. Look at the quarterback. Seven yards after block. Okay. Do his thing. Make sure the guys didn't go up the middle. Force them around the edge. Second level. Oh, no, never mind. It's in there. In the line. And look at him just hand fight. So nasty, man. In a good way, of course. Just so physically aggressive. And look at that short yardage, right? Completely gets in, uh, that yard they need. Plus, that's an easy first down in short yardage. Great job. Exchange this guy out very nicely there. And it's number five from getting it out and play. Uh, hands are outside there. However, he still keeps him engaged more than well enough to give his time his quarterback time to throw. So while not the best technique there, that's definitely still a win, and we've seen him use proper and effective technique on so many other occasions. I'm not marking anything against him. Oh, that was a false, or, uh, offside. He jumped. Off the outside linebacker. Left guard is getting driven back, but right now it's there, so... You're safe. Well, at least from the interior. <laughs> Yeah, number three just completely out of the play. Not like a kind of throw, it was intentional grabbing, but looks like his enemy's coming forward. Oh no, he got the out. It's a fumble. It's a good good angle. Out of bounds though. And just anchors so well. And watch him take this guy out on the screen. Beautiful. That's five yards post block, man. We're gonna have to make this an official thing in Ryan's Twitter right down here. Look at that drive! Look at oh my god, look at that drive! I mean still after the whistle. What a freaking play. Watch this, right? So he he gets the initial first one off the line, right? And then just drives all the way. What is that? 15 yards? 10 yards? About 10 yards after the, after the line. Unreal. And again, does the same thing. I believe that was right now. And a whole line. Look at how much the whole line got. What a great play by the, uh, the whole Arkansas line. 
Gang just holds his guys so effectively. Opens up enough of a lane to at least get two or three. Looks like three. Second level. Oh, look at that. What a block. Watch this. So you see him, of course, start out on this guy, then move up and completely flatten his guy. That's a pancake. With maple syrup. Straight from across the border. Oh, that's a replay, the same thing. Okay. I mean, I guess the pitch playing. Oh, okay. I ended up working out. I was a little bit confused with the scheme at, at, at first. Oh my gosh, he actually got free. Uh, I was a little bit confused with the scheme at first, at first, because they let the initial pressure through on on the toss. But obviously, he's doing his job. His job is to take out this linebacker here, and look at what he does. Flattens him. Flattens him. Now, now for the fun part, how many yards does this guy get post right now? Okay, right now takes them out at the 45, okay. Forty-five to forty-five-ish, so we'll say roughly ten yards. Post right now, that's a big win. You just got your offense ten free yards, boys. Gang holds on to his guy long enough. You get for three or four yards. Gang anchors so well, gets his hands inside, keeps him at length. Beautiful. Terrible throw, though. Oh, I love this! That is Quentin Nelson esque. That's one of the things I love so much about Quentin. Watch what he does on this play, right? So keep in mind, he's an interior lineman. He's a garter center, and this play he's playing center, right? He's 72. Watch what he does here, right? So this is a zone play. His zone responsibility is the middle. This gap here, this A gap. Or rather, both A gaps. But watch this. He sees these two guys coming on the edge. He feels comfortable enough with this A gap that he trusts his lineman to block, so he gets and takes out the edge guy. Unfortunately, the right guard lets the, the guy up through the interior, so it doesn't work out well. But, oh, that is so, so good field vision. Anchors. And look at that hole. Oh, and that finish! That's a pancake! Pancake and waffles! Oh, I love this. Watch this. Bam! And then that... Finish though, down to the ground. Oh, I love that play. Again, same thing. Look at how much drive he's getting. He's getting all the way to the 35, the first down marker. Elite. And they're getting crushed too. I mean, no lie, look at the scoreboard. And they're getting crushed, 45 13. And he is still playing and giving it his all. 100% motor every single snap. Look at that. Look at that drive. Look at that drive. Look how much push he's getting. This dude is a people mover. Use this guy's transportation downtown Detroit, man. Look at him get that dude out of the way. Oh, man.
Okay, calling out and adjusting here. Zone play. Takes number five. The right guard should have moved over. That's on the guard. To be fair, that's a great play by Allen to still find the open receiver and get it out to him. So the result of the play was good. But that right guard did not come over like he was supposed to. Look at that. Such good anger. Not getting beat. Not getting beat. I mean, <laughs> look at this drive. Look at that drive. What a nice hole by the right guard. That's great blocking by the whole line. Now, interior guys get movement. The right tackle opens up the gap. Very nice. Short yardage again. Right now, in the, in the guard, open up that hole. That's an easy first down, plus five yards post right now. And pitch play is getting to second level. And look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, what nice finish from the running back, too. But watch this play from right now, right? So we're starting to we're starting to catch on that his assignment on these pitch plays is get to second level. The guards handle the the lines, the tackles handle the edges, and, the, and he handles second level. So what he does here, he does a great job of getting to that second level and taking on that running back or that linebacker. Well, he's still about five yards behind the line, mind you. He's still already out there. And then what happens here, the, the linebacker starts to bring him a little bit to the inside. Recovery. Bam! Forces him out of play. Five yards post right now. In fact, actually 10 if he include the finish from the running back too, which is overly impressive. Bam! Look at that drive! Look at that drive! Look at that drive! Easy first down! What a play! Love it, man! Watch! Look at how 94 just gets blown up! Blown off the line! Easy first down! Easy! Just so, so great anchor, right? And he comes out on the screen. And, and takes this guy out of the play. So, so good. Getting right in the middle of it all here in this pile anchoring. Just not letting anyone through. Oh, what a play by the running back. Or the receiver. Trying to chuck him. Bam. No one's getting past him. <laughs> Takes that number one. Man. I mean, they're getting crushed. 
40 points, and he's still doing his thing. He's still protecting his quarterback. He's still doing his job. Okay, I'm looking at him just opening up that lane. Look at that. And look at that drive. That's five yard drive plus. Second level. Completely takes out his guy on the pitch play. Unfortunately, the wide receiver couldn't do his job. Or maybe that was a guard. Look at this. And he's moving him still. Huh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Second level. Opens up the lane. Oh, so close. Did they give it to him? Looks like they might be giving it to him. <laughs> oh, wow. But again, look at where right now was on this play, right? We talk all the time about our circles and goal line. And look at where he's at. He's in the end zone. Already has more touchdowns than Michigan quarterbacks. <laughs> Rip. Uh, I had to do that. Anyway, um, back to the point. Right now there. Just not getting moved. Unreal. So, I know it's only two games, but I'm definitely, definitely going to be doing a part two to this, at least. Probably even more than that. Uh, and the chat is about to start in a half hour, as you can see, it's 6.30 here. Uh, so, uh, again, guys, thank you for tuning in and enjoying this one. This was a freaking blast for me. I love watching offensive linemen so much more than I ever have before, especially after seeing how terrible the Lions was last year. Uh, and, I mean, this dude is incredible. I don't know why any Lions fan out there ever should be disappointed with this pick. I understand that people want Edge, and people want Harold Landry, or maybe people wanted the flashy pick in Darius Geist, who, by the way, is also still there, uh, and, and could possibly fall to 51. Uh, but, I mean, you tell me that this guy's not going to help the Lions next year. You tell me that this guy's going to improve over uh, Wiggins, or Dahl, or Barkley, or Karen, or, or even or anyone, right? This dude is the clear second best offensive lineman in this class, and it's not actually as big of a gap as people make it out to be. I mean, I am absolutely in love with this kid. He is so much fun to watch, as you've seen from my reactions to these, uh, and I cannot wait to see him in Allen Park next season. So, with that, thank you guys again for joining us today. Uh, this is Chris, and I hope you guys come back again and check out part two, and if we do a part three, a part three uh, on Frank right now, as well as the other guys that we're going to be watching. Uh, obviously, Brain is a Denver fan, so we're probably going to be checking out some Chubb tape as well as the day two guys. Uh, I'll definitely be doing some day two uh, streams, or videos, I mean, as well, uh, on the Lions day two, and even day three picks if we can find tape on those guys uh, and, and such. So. Uh, again, hope to see you guys again soon. Peace out for now. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Good luck in the draft tonight, too.